Howdy, Pilgrim. Let's go back and kill us a phoenix. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 18 of Supernatural Season 6, and this is the episode where they go back in time to the Old West to kill a phoenix in a, their attempt to take on the mother of all. The episode starts with them coming to Grandpa Campbell's bunker that's full of stuff, which I don't know how Sam knows where this is. Now, he does have some repressed memories of where stuff is and some kind of knowledge of it, but I do find it a bit of a convenience that they just start the episode here and they kind of just don't even address how they found it or where they found it. There's a key. And there must supposed to be a lock. There are a few stretches of the imagination that this episode does, and I'm not talking about the idea of going back in time. There's something at the beginning here, and then there's a very big stretch at the end. In their research, they find out that what possibly could kill the mother of all are the ashes of a phoenix and the only person who has a record of ever seeing one is Samuel Colt. So they ask Castiel to send them back in time and Dean's super excited about it because he gets to put on all of his cowboy gear and get to play Clint Eastwood. Even though when they go back in time he's made fun of for his attire for nearly the entirety of the episode. But I like this episode for a lot of things. One, it's actually a really solid time travel episode in terms of the logic and how things come to be. Dab and Laughlin and whoever was the third person actually do a very good job of not only making this a solid time travel episode, a solid monster hunting episode, but also a really good Back to the Future episode, especially with how it ends. There is some sympathy towards the Phoenix because he's there not for any sort of malicious reason. He's there for revenge for his wife being murdered by this hick fuck and then the sheriff and the town judge siding with the human guy trying to kill the phoenix obviously for it to fail but unfortunately they don't really delve into that so much it's always a very rare treat when you actually get to side with the monster when there's some form of humility some form of reasoning slash compassion that the audience can generate towards a villainous character something akin to that of the witch gambler from season five, or the guy in the metamorphosis episode in season four. You feel compassion for that character, even though that they are the villain of this episode. This episode tries it for like a sentence and that's it. So there's a little bit of a lacking on that, but the humor in this episode is so freaking good. I love the references to all of the different Clint Eastwood movies. I love the reference to Blazing Saddles with the Mongol. Never mind that shit. Here comes Mongol. By the way, this entire set is Border Town, which I have pointed out before in the past. This is where part one of season finale of season two took place. I've got to work here on a couple of occasions. The area where the hangman's noose is, that wasn't there when I was there. It was a platform because Man in the High Castle was using it. And I actually fell through the floorboards. Unfortunately, a lot of the facades of this town have gone to the wayside because this set was made back in 1989. No one's really taken care of it. The only thing that's ever been done is things have been painted, things have been added on and taken away. That bar though is 100% exactly like that you can go upstairs and walk around the rafters and everything like that the behind area is not so much well input that part where dean is running away from the phoenix and he goes around and hides behind the building that in fact actually is the only facade that is somewhat of a viewable area if they actually were to turn the camera from looking sideways to the full-on back facade you just see all of the wood planks that would be holding all of those buildings up aside from a really cool final shootout we also get to meet samuel colt in person and sam shows him his phone and sat and samuel's just like yeah you got a future thingamajigger uh, I totally trust you. And just when you think that they don't get the ashes, they pull a very big stretch and a final Back to the Future reference with Samuel Colt sending the ashes to Sam at Bobby's house. Is that a fucking stretch? Oh by God it is. Sure, he has his thingamajigger, which apparently Sam left his phone. First he'd have to 
figure out who Bobby is, he'd have to send it to the correct time, which yeah, maybe Tex could have done that. Imagine if he was reading it differently instead of it being month, day, year, he could have read it day, month, year or something like that. Yeah, this is a bit of a stretch even for a show like Supernatural. Yeah, but they had to make this kind of reference at the end and it works out in the end. Also, there is a little bit of a dip into the anarchy that's happening with Castiel's army with Rachel and it's a fight that does lead to a little bit more tension having to touch Bobby's soul and whatnot. Overall this is a fun episode. It's once again an alternate sort of timeline episode much akin to the previous few that we've had but it's a really fun episode. The, the references and the humor are fantastic and it does help progress the monster storyline which it's gonna come to an end real fucking soon. The only detractors from this episode being the very kind of lightly touched on, very weak Rachel element, as well as the stretches that this episode has to go to to kind of connect everything. But overall, it's still a very good time travel episode in terms of its continuity. So in the end, I'm gonna give Frontierland a six out of seven. It's fun. It gives me an excuse to wear the cowboy hat again. And I actually always thought this episode came later. But if I'm correct, maybe they're going to go back in time to Western area one more time if I'm correct. But I might also be wrong on that fact. That's enough for me. Let's see what you guys have to say about this episode. I remember being hyped for Frontierland during season six productions. I read many, so many articles and interviews and when the episode aired, I was happy as can be. Upon rewatch, it has a nostalgic feel that calls back to a lot of my favorite Western films and Back to the Future Part Two reference never gets old. I love Supernatural, try to make a realistic tried ma making it a realistic town, much to te Dean's dismay. Also, Sam meeting Samuel Colt made me wish Sam and Dean had an episode where they met their past selves. There's something cool about Hunter's leaving journals, and we I love we learn later on that Bobby co uh, converts the Campbell Library digitally. And when the episode aired, I made the prediction Castiel was using the souls for himself during the Civil War. Oh, you were onto the game. While Rachel is a forgettable angel, as most are, her death scene is beautifully shot. Lastly, I hate the Phoenix had to die. He was the only evil when he started shooting Dean. Also strange, the mother of all weaknesses, a Phoenix, if she implied that she has birthed every supernatural monster except for angels and demons. My headcanon is the Phoenix is a hybrid monster bred from other monsters that Eve didn't create her self kind of like a nephilim of the abominations of the angels i theorize phoenixes are an abomination to monsters and that's why they are treat are a threat uh, much like jack was to god for past selves that would have been interesting to see but i think they just went into their past story so many times like that one stupid episode where they killed the baba yaga that could have been an episode about past selves or something phoenix i do feel bad for him because technically speaking he's not a villain he's just there by unfortunate circumstances i'm going to use this episode as a way to speak on uh, how i feel about the second half of season six this episode advanced the overall story of the season but leaves me with the impression that the writers doesn't know uh doesn't quite know the overall direction of season six sure the confrontation with the mother of all is imminent and presumably the reveal of sam's salvation from hell also we know that castiel is fighting a heavenly war but all in all there's far too little to see um to be seen of the opponents for the brothers in the war in heaven. Budget-wise, Supernatural couldn't afford heaven-hell battles. But that wouldn't be necessary either because the, in the past, writers have shown us how much one can do uh, can do such good good versus evil arguments as a means to an end without immediately turning them into a spect uh, spectacular end goal. Must watch, 7 out of 7. Despite everything I've said, I do love this episode. Might be a little biased because it's hard for me not to love anything to the Wild West related. What an episode. Admittedly, I didn't like this episode when I first watched it predominantly uh, because I'm not a fan of Western themed episodes, but upon rewatching this episode over the years, I appreciate it a lot more. Moving on, there are a lot of aspects of this episode that I quite enjoyed, and the only six of them stood out for, to me. The first being Elias Finch. I like his backstory, his motivations, and his reason for wanting to seek revenge, and I thought he was a pretty good one-off villain. Second, the Dean. I thought it was pretty good. he made a pretty good sheriff. Third, the scene in the beginning where they talk about Star Trek. Fourth, Samuel Colt, when he calls Sam's phone a magic brick. Fifth, the way that Cass asked Bobby if he could touch his soul. And lastly, my favorite scene of the episode was when Rachel called Sam and Dean telling them that they, they can only call Cass when they need something. She's 100% correct in that assessment. And another thing, how did Samuel Colt know the year, day, and address to send that package to Sam? 
who is still considered to be a menace in the eyes of the law. I guarantee you that Dad probably wrote that end scene. Yes, that is the that bit is the stretch that I was talking about. That that is asking a lot for the audience to kind of you know be like, yeah, sure. Frontierland. This episode is a banger. I absolutely love seeing Castiel, Lieutenant Rachel, call out Sam and Dean for always summoning Castiel to help them, especially since he's been busy dealing with the war against Raphael. I did enjoy Dean get a reality check when the town sunrise uh, while in the town sunrise. It was interesting seeing the conversation between Sam and Samuel Colt and Sam telling Samuel that even though he's done with hunting and has become a drunkard, he will always be a hunter. I like the scene where Rachel confronts Castiel about what he's doing. She is so right, even though I understand where Castiel is coming from. I was a little sad that Castiel had to kill her. This episode rem totally reminds me of Back to the Future 3. I give this episode a 7 out of 7. Frontierland is a bit of a guilty pleasure for me as I do love the Western on the occasion. I love the Star Trek reference and saying that I don't even know you people anymore. Star Trek 4 Save the Whales always made me laugh. When Dean goes to hit the saloon on the head on the <laughs> and she's covered in cold sores and he says this is so much more uh, germy than I imagined. The Phoenix was clearly... A budget saver making it look human. I do like the ending with Samuel Colt leaving the package for them that has been in the office since it started with the instructions to bring it to you at this time. Also, with Castiel touching Bobby's soul, showing us how powerful they are getting ready for the finale. Uh, I grew up wi with Western shows like bon uh, Bonanza, and so this episode was cool for crossing into a uh, once uh, very popular genre. Yes, it was. That was the highlight at one point was Westerns. Now they're like dead. Uh, except for certain things like kind of like Yellowstone or 1883. I like the uh, Bonanza style opening credit with the showdown of the Phoenix and getting to meet Samuel Colt, his only appearance in the series. I especially liked how Sam... Well, actually... No, yeah, you're right. Uh, li I like... I was thinking about the guy who has the Colt who dies at the... At near the end of season one. I especially liked how Sam conv convinced him to lend his gun and contribute to the fight, but this episode is mostly just a regular hunt in a new setting. It feels like it could have and maybe should have been a standout, but instead it's a pretty average. We never see the Phoenix again, and we're never told the lore behind why Eve created a monster that could kill her, so it never made sense to me. Uh, compared with how the boys gathered the tools to cage Lucifer in season five, the road to taking down Eve seems way too easy. And since she's supposed to be impressive, big bad, the Castiel arc and the mystery of how what's going on with the buildup in this episode, it comes to a close telling you this uh, secret, but only teasing your imagination. And you have made uh, you are made to feel for his angel friend when he ends up killing her, and when Dean is really douchey towards her for no reason. Yeah, no, I I agree with you guys in terms of the the complaint about the fact that. There is no really good discernible reason as to why the Phoenix can just kill Eve and also the build up to it. Yes. Um, again, this they didn't really know what the key idea was for this season. And we are going to find that out, especially when we go into the next episode. I'm actually here more curious to see what you think about Frontierland because I know you're a big fan of Westerns. Don't kill me, but I only realized that unfortunately I'm not a fan of Westerns. Now, admittedly, this can be a, a thing like you have to watch certain ones like 310 to Yuma. That's probably one of the best ones I can suggest to you. If you've never seen the 310 to Yuma remake, watch it. It's probably one of the best Western movies made in the last 20 years. Uh, I tried watching Justified and Hell on Wheels, and even though they, I know they are good, I find them slow, and frankly, uh, trying to watch 13 episodes of a Western is a chore for me. I can't get into Hell on Wheels either, but I will say I like a lot of the first season of Justified, but I know that some people don't because it's not really connected. Start with the second season. You'll enjoy it. Uh, what can I say? I'm more of a science fiction, uh, science fi action guy. That doesn't mean that I can't appreciate Western episodes, and I think Frontier Land is a case done right. I love the setup, I like the monster and his story, and I also like seeing the gun again, as well as the Samuel Kelt. Fun, fun fact that there were talks of making a Western spin off with Sa young Samuel Colt in the Kripke era. Okay, out of all the ideas for a spin off, I never understood why this one didn't get a pass. I guess this episode was a showcase of what it could have been. Actually, yeah, you know what? Out of all the spin offs that I've heard between. Bloodlines, Wayward Sisters, and this. This would have actually been pretty freaking dope. The only issue is they could not have filmed this here because this one set is the only really... what We have two kind of Western like locations in all of Vancouver. Uh, you'd have to go out to the prairies and do that shit. So it would have been hard to shoot out here. All right, guys. Now we have Mommy Dearest. My God, that's a reference to that awful movie I reviewed a long time ago. No! 
I'm gonna put that at the end of the credits here. If you guys want to give me your guys thoughts about that episode, please do in the comments below and I'll read those off in the next review. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Till then guys, catch you on the flip side.